artist, Luciano Castellani. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, Trey. I appreciate it. Hope everybody's doing well today on this very special holiday, Martin Luther King Day. And seeing how it is Martin Luther King Day, I think that we should pick up on what the good doctor was trying to pass on in his messages, that every man has potential to achieve what they want because, as he said, it's not about the color of their skin, but rather the content of their character. And in order to connect that to nano shifting, which is my philosophical ideology, what that means is it doesn't matter who you are because everybody has the same human potential to achieve what it is they want, which is why you see so many times the same good old rags to riches story. Now, how is that possible? Yes, yeah, some people are born with different advantages and disadvantages, but at the same time, everybody once again has the one most important tool that a human has. It's their mind, it's their brain. And that's exactly what my book, the Psychological Revamp Workbook is going to fix for you. It's gonna fix your mindsets it's going to help you realize the potential that you have in order to achieve whatever you want. And the best part about it is it's not like any other self-help book where it's just a bunch of wishy-washy nonsense. And it's like, you got to believe to achieve. What does that mean? I give you the actual steps that you can take to get to where you want. And that's why it's called nano shifting. You're making small nano shifts in your life to achieve exactly what you want. Excellent, brother. So the reason we're having this, uh, this live presentation here is because I read your book on self mastery. Yeah, and I thought it was excellently written. Um, Thank you. You broke down the understanding of how someone can achieve self mastery. You spoke on why it's important. Um, and obviously, you know, self mastery. So it's for you, you know, it's to benefit you It's for you to understand your mind, understand your body, understand your character, your beingness. But, you know, it's also very attractive to women. Like a man who has mastered himself yes. can lead a woman. He can be grounded uh, in his masculine energy and allow her to be in her feminine energy. And that, that's, um, that dance of the masculine and feminine can, you know, happen. Yes. Um, when a man is not has not achieved self-mastery, he's in the way. He's always focused on himself. He's always, ah, oh, man, I hope she likes me and this and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, just uh, an anxious mess. Yes. So can you um, talk a little bit about your book, um, you know, Achieving Self-Mastery and Living Your Best Life? I like how you added that in there, too. Um, yeah. Can you get, maybe give us a summary of, like, some of the things you talk about in that book? Yes. So one of the most important chapters in that book is actually related to romantic relationships. And as you said, if you're a man who doesn't know themselves, then you're going to have all kinds of problems because you don't know what you want from life. You don't know what type of dream life you'd want. So you'll have no goals, no vision for the future. And you're not going to know what type of friends to surround yourself with. And you're not going to know what you want from a woman. So if you get a woman that's not good for you, you're not going to know it. And if you get a woman that is great for you, you're also not going to have any idea because you're ungrounded, as you said, Trey. Mm -hmm. So one of the chapters is all about romantic relationships and identifying what are the things that are valuable to you in those type of relationships. And we have another chapter, which is my personal favorite. It's about removing the need for the validation of others. Basically, if, if you've been around this circle for a while, I'm sure you've heard a couple phrases like uh, don't give a fuck mentality or like uh, emotional detachment, all of that. But nobody ever really like emphasized the idea in, in such a way that anybody could pick it up and learn it, which is what I aim to do in my book. So basically, when you're an ungrounded person, you're going to look to other people to tell you that you're doing what you should be, you know, because you're not focused in your core. You're not in tune to who you are. So because you don't know who you are, you need people from the outside to tell you what to do. 
this is what it means to be a follower. This is what it means to be a little quote unquote, to use the terms here, a beta, you know, because you need other people to direct you to do what you think that they want you to do. And in the end, this will probably leave you unhappy, unsatisfied. So this chapter is all about cutting off all of those ties and just allowing yourself to be with yourself, which I got to add, this is the part that everyone is scared about. So many people are afraid to just sit down with themselves and their thoughts because they're afraid of the unknown. But how sad is it that they themselves are unknown to themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So that chapter is all about realizing who you are and cutting off the need for other people to approve of you. And the funny thing is, is guys do this with girls too. They want the girl to like them. They want the girl to be happy, etc. But when they do that, what ends up happening is the girl's completely repulsed. So it's actually the opposite. Like Trey says in his Facebook videos, you got to be grounded in yourself. Like I say in my book, you have to validate yourself. And from that, it's like a paradox. Other people come and like you more because you like yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, one thing that I, I am curious about um, is how do you find that balance? You know, I, I want to get your perspective on this. How do you find that balance of being um, assertive, grounded, you know, having boundaries, you know, telling it like it is, you know, putting people in their place, but yeah. also being able to, because you don't want to like violate the environment. You don't want to be like yeah. an asshole, right? You don't want to like piss people off unnecessarily, right? Yes. Um, so how do you find that balance? Because I think that's important too. Like, how do you, you know, be a man, you know, be masculine, you know, um, you know, let people know like, yo, I'm not one to be fucked with, yes. but also still be like a cool dude that people want to like be around, you know? So yeah. how, how do you find that balance? That's one of the most important lessons in life, Trey. And I have a very simple philosophy on that. And I got the idea from a boxer who his name is Ed Lattimore, Edward Lattimore. And his idea here is that you don't want to go out of your way to make enemies, but you don't want to be a piece of paper in the wind either. So the way that I live out this philosophy is it's very simple. I have martial arts training. So I always just like to live from a place of one, words are meaningless. People can say whatever to me, but I can say whatever to them. If someone insults me, I'll insult them right back. They're just words. But if things ever get physical, it won't be because of me, but it will end because of me. All about self-defense. And the third most important thing is awareness. Because like you mentioned, you don't want to ruin the environment, don't want to ruin the vibe. So let's use two separate examples. Example one, let's say you're just at like some house party and you're having fun, you're having drinks and some guy just starts talking shit to you, but you can see he has like a smile on his face. You just talk shit back, you know, challenge him to some beer pong, get him drunk. And then by the end of it, you'll probably walk out of there with a new best friend, you know? But then in example two, the same thing's happening, only you're at a nightclub or a bar. And this guy, he's not smiling. He's like, he's menacing at you like that, you know? And you can tell this guy's pissed. He has a hand in the pocket and he's just yelling at you. So at that point, you know that you have to respect yourself. You can't let this guy just yell at you and threaten you or whatever. But at the same time, you have to use the third key, which is the awareness. Hand in the po pocket. Everything's dark can't really see what's going on, don't know if he has friends around, could have a weapon. So at that point, there's only two options. You have to bring things down. You have to de-escalate the situation, just like what a police officer would do. Mm -hmm. Because you got to remember, all these cops in the, in the in TV and whatnot, when they escalate, exactly wrong. That's the wrong training. You have to de-escalate. So you de-escalate, calm everything down, and then if this guy is still going crazy, obviously you have to protect yourself and you got to do what you have to do. Yeah. So it's kind of like being like a samurai, you know, you're wearing your armor all the time. You have your katana all the time and people sometimes will come challenge you. They'll mess with you. But what are they? This, this guy's a fucking peasant. That guy's a, a fucking a fisherman. 
You know, this guy, this guy's a fry cook. Why do I care if they challenge me? But then one of these people comes up with a knife. Well, then you got to pull out the katana, you know? So that's my philosophy on how to balance that, you know? Yeah, that's strong, brother. Um, I know you've been around since I had the group, uh, the Sexy Beast Tribe, and you've seen the evolution. Yeah. Um, one of the things I believe in is the ability to shape shift. So like being yes. able to shift into different characters depending on the situation you're in. Yep. So even though my group is no longer the Sexy Beast Tribe, the Sexy Beast is still a character I can shift into when necessary. Yes. Right then, when it when it uh, it started as a sexy beast tribe, then it became the unbreakable beast tribe, which was mm -hmm. more about um, just being indestructible, like mentally, and you know, being more stoic and that kind of thing. Yes. That character I can shift into that character when necessary as well. And then now it's the masculine throne. It's more about being royal and you know, king like and that kind yes. of thing. And that's a character as well. Now the the king to me, that's a character. I now that I'm I I tend to stay in that character because that character can handle like pretty much any situation. Yeah. But there's times, you know, if you're dealing with a woman and you're in a certain uh, situation and you need to escalate things sexually, you need to turn into the sexy beast, right? Exactly. And then there's times where, you know, maybe somebody's trying to fuck with you or like disrespect you or whatever. Or maybe just they want to like get you reactive. That's when you became, become the unbreakable beast. You become yes. stoic and you demonstrate that you can't be triggered. Right. And then you have, you know, there's all these different characters that, you know, I, I, use the joker as a character too you know if somebody like is getting too serious i just i just tap into the joker and just start yeah smiling yeah you know so you can you can shape shift into these different characters and i think um it's important to be dynamic like that you know be able to you know you don't just want to be one thing you know i used right. to think um growing up people would say oh you're shy and they would try to they try to put you in a box right yeah like, exactly yeah, I could have just accepted that box, right? And be like, you know what? I'm a shy guy. And that would have just been who I was. And that's that's not no, um, that's not achieving self-mastery. That's just being in a box. That's just being, right. you know, what people told you you're supposed to be. Yeah. But we can literally, whatever we visualize, like we can become it. Like whoever we see on TV or whatever it is, anyone we admire, we can become our own version of that, right? We can yes. see certain attributes, certain characteristics and develop them within ourselves. Um, so yeah, I think I, I love what you said about how to balance it. And yeah, I just wanted to add like the, the ability to shape shift, like, yes, we need to understand that we don't have to be one way, you know, exactly. We can, we can be whatever we need to be. We can be like water as, um, Bruce Lee would say, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right, brother. So self mastery. Um, another part I wanted to talk about is maybe, like, is this, how long does it take to achieve self-mastery? Or like, is it, is it a lifelong thing? I, th I think it's a, a lifelong yeah. thing. Like you're always going towards it. But can you like, can you get to a point where you're like at a really good level and can it happen quickly? Or what is your thoughts on that? So in regards to the time it takes to achieve self-mastery, it's twofold. The, the uh, samurai... Uh, particularly of the Zen sex, they called this process the process of Satori. And it happens in two moments. First, the first moment for a samurai is that first Satoric moment. It's like that boom, and like they just realize everything at once. It's like that moment of enlightenment. And then from that Satoric moment, it becomes a Satoric process for the rest of their life, where they're just getting better and better every day. But it has to start with that first step. Once they take that first step, it becomes a lifelong process upward. Because once you're aware, you can't regress. You won't let yourself regress. It, like You just can't because you're aware now. You know, So it'd be like double shame. But in regards to how long it takes to have that first moment, unfortunately, some people go their whole lives without ever waking up. You know, They live their whole life as a, a zombie. You know? And they, they're just a puppet, a zombie. They never reach that moment where they realize they can have self-mastery. But for a person who does have that moment, it could happen in an instant, you know? Maybe you watch one of, somebody watches one of your videos and then suddenly it clicks. Maybe they read my book and suddenly everything makes sense. 
maybe they go out on some meditative retreat and boom, suddenly they come to realizations. And then after that, at that point, once they have that moment, it depends on them. It depends what they're willing to do, how fast they're able to do it, and how quickly they can learn and adapt. Because just like in evolutionary psychology, it's about whoever adapts. That's who will survive. That's who will become strong. So once you have this moment, you have to act with the knowledge, just like every, anything else. Knowledge without action is worthless. So that's that's the answer to the time. We can't hear you. How about now? Perfect. All right, brother. So what I'm curious about is... In regards to self-mastery, is there a direct correlation to your level of self-mastery and the success you achieve in life? Like what Absolutely. You okay. Now, it's directly correlated. If you don't know yourself, you're going to fail at everything. If you know yourself, you're going to succeed at a lot of things. And the secret is to also know others as well. But that's the next step. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, directly correlated and this has been known since ancient times, all right? Like since Sun Tzu's time. If you know yourself and you know your enemy, you need not fear the result of a thousand battles. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it from uh, my perspective. And I'm seeing that, you know, if you don't understand yourself, you're just literally in the way of everything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> literally in the way dude like like back in high school you'd look at someone like she's in the way just in the way dude yeah yeah so it's like you're it's like you're literally fighting yourself like that's what i noticed um it's like you want to get get your you know it's really like what your subconscious mind you want to get your subconscious mind on your side right because yes you know you have the the subconscious mind is 95 percent, and then you have the conscious mind which is five percent and you know, I, I looked into this stuff and I was like, yo, why is it so hard to like, um, for example, change your habits or do the thing that you know you're supposed to do? Well, we yes. have this these um, programs from the past exactly. that are programmed into our subconscious mind. And it's it's 95 percent. So with a five, yeah, there's a five percent of us that's like, yeah, I should be doing this and I should be working out or I should be uh, um, working on my social skills or I should um, actually go for that business that I said yes. I was going to go for. But the 95% is based on the past, right? The old programming. So exactly. what we need to do is, is rewire that because like, if you don't get your subconscious mind on your side, you're basically going to um, self-sabotage yourself. Right. So I think um, that's actually, you know, a big part of um, achieving self-mastery is getting your subconscious mind on your side. So you're not yes. battling yourself, you know? Like you have to create that that harmony. There needs to be some harmony within you. And then, yes. as you said, once you create the harmony within yourself, once you handle yourself, then you can start focusing on like really, you know, connecting with women and stuff like that and, and having those those powerful connections or what, whatever it is you're trying to do. Like if you want to get multiple women or whatever, now you can really put your energy into understanding female nature and these other things because right. you don't handle yourself. But if you don't handle yourself, you're not, it's going to be very difficult for you to like dive into these other things because the foundation is weak. Exactly. You know? All right, cool, brother. So what would you say to, um, to someone who's like, okay, man, so I want to, I want to master myself. I, I made a post the other day, you know, in order, you need to master your mind, your body and your emotions. And, and once you do that, you become very attractive to women. Cause you know, I talk a lot about attracting women, but yeah. we know, we know self mastery is, is, um, going to help you in all areas of your life. But, um, what would you say to someone who is interested in, um, self mastery and, and they break it down like this? Like, how do I become a master of my mind, my emotions and my body? Right. How would you, what would, what some advice? Cause I know it's like a, it's a long process. You wrote a whole book yeah. on it. But like, yeah. what would you tell like if somebody like sent you a private message like, hey, man, you know what? I want to master my mind, my body and my emotion, my emotions. I want to, uh, you know, achieve self mastery. What mm -hmm. are some tips I can apply right now? Actually, about 
Well, let's do the other two first. We'll talk about the body and the mind and then emotions last because I want to tie that back to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. So with the body, it's very simple. You, you have to spend time with your body in both resting states and active states. And that means when you're with your body resting, you're just laying down, sitting down, and you're just sitting with your body. And one of the processes that I do is it's like a, a slight meditation. I start with my toes and then I kind of like imagine I'm scanning my whole body. I'm going up and I'm like, do I feel sensations? You know, like maybe like right here, I feel a little bit of a smile, you know, over here, I feel my eyes smiling like this. And then you can just release all of the tension, all of the, the muscle activations. And then that's how you get more in tune and harmonize with your body. And then the active states, it's very simple. You play a sport or you lift weights. That way you can see how your body handles stress. And if that's something that needs to be worked on, then that could be worked on. And in regards to how to get control and mastery over your mind, this is what people forget. All the content that you take in and consume will either nourish you or poison you. So when somebody listens to something that's motivational or something that's inspirational, something that can teach you how to, how to pick up a skill, you know, like, like, a, like how, to, how to become a better businessman, how, how to relate better with friends, how to seduce more women in different ways, how to play an instrument better. All of that helps your mind. It nourishes it because when you have knowledge, it expands and that's going to be what you're thinking about. But when, when you're reading this nonsense on the internet, like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, the world is filled with a bunch of bad people. When you're reading all of that, that's what's going to be programmed into your mind. Just like you said, it's subconscious programming, which ties us back to the last thing, the most important element of mastery. It's the emotions. In order to master your emotions, you have to actually dig into your subconscious mind. You have to go back, retrace all the steps and figure out when did I start feeling this way? So we'll give an example. Let's say that there's this like this girl and she's really fat, right? She eats a lot. She feels like she needs to eat to feel good, but she's going to think back and remember what caused me to need to feel that I have to eat so much. And then she goes back, goes back. It turns out her first boyfriend called her skin and bones, called her a twig girl. And ever since then, it just got cemented and programmed into her subconscious mind that she has to be bigger to make men like her. And then boom, then she became obese. And that's what happened. So in order to master your emotions, you have to trace them back. And also, I want to I wanna just drop a little tidbit here. Thanks to my, my bachelor's in psychology, I've had the opportunity to develop a system. It's a therapeutic system that actually completely cures any and all traumas. It's a seven-step process where I go with the client step by step by step, retracing all the way to the very beginning, the root of when that trauma took place, and we discover how it's negatively impacting their lives and then we do my therapy session, and then we clear it all out completely, permanently. And then that trauma is erased from their subconscious mind forever, which allows them to go and do whatever they want in life. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, you can reach out to me on my website or my Facebook, DanteLCostellani.com, or DanteLCostellani on Facebook, or LucianoCostellani.com. We can arrange the therapeutic session and depending on how many traumas you'd like to remove will affect the cost, obviously, but it's worth it in the end because once you have a life and a mind free of traumas, you're just going to be very, very impressed. But back to the emotions. The other half is something that a lot of men are afraid of. Trey, I'm sure you would agree that women are pretty emotional. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But the secret to why these that women are happy with their emotions is because they feel them, you know, they literally have the freedom to just feel whatever emotion because to emotions are real at the time, you know, so if I'm happy, I'm happy, if I'm sad, I'm sad, hate, love, angry, joyful, it's real at the time. But the difference between men and women is women, they just feel it. 
they don't try to block themselves. They just feel it. And then it just, it goes away because it processes through them. But men, let's say, let's say somebody like, let's say somebody like comes and insults me and then, then I don't want to feel it. You know, I just, I act like nothing happened. I like, ah, ha, ha, oh, whatever. I laugh it off. Right. That takes root in your mind because instead of feeling it and letting it go away, you're keeping it inside and then it pops like a little egg and then it just fills all of you up. And now three weeks later, you're blowing up at people that did nothing to you. And it's because of that latent anger that you never released, you know? So you got to feel your emotions and you got to remember why you felt them in the first place. Yeah, brother, that's, um, that's excellent that you touched on that because uh, you know, obviously the, the group's called the Masculine Throne. So there's there's some misconceptions about what it means to be masculine. You know, they, some people think that it just means you're like this tough, hard guy all the time. Yeah. And you can't feel your emotions and you can't be human, which is not true. Actually, <laughs> exactly. Actually, yes. It's actually more difficult to um, feel your emotions and own them than to be like closed off and all that. Because, you know, anyone can just tighten up and just like, you know um repress their emotions but it's it's actually much harder to embrace when you feel anger embrace when you feel sad or embrace when you feel joy and let it let it yeah. process itself out um so yeah i'm glad that you touched on that and then also the the past trauma that's a that's a big one yeah um, you know if you're trying to you know for example you know i have guys that are coming to me you know how do i get some girls right right you're going out there and you're talking to girls and you're being triggered in the interaction and you don't know why and then you're sabotaging the, the the interaction and then you keep going out and approaching it's like yeah if you keep going out and approaching of course yeah you're gonna get lucky or whatever because you're playing right. this game but if you actually deal with the past trauma and you and you you know rewire your subconscious mind so now it's actually on your side and you know you work on developing better habits and you know, even another powerful one is like setting up a morning routine that puts you in the right state of being for the day. Yes. Like you do these things. Now, when you go out and approach women, it's so much easier. Like you're able to be more present to the moment. You're able to show up as the most attractive version of yourself. You yes. Know, the conversation can flow. The girl can see like the strength in your eyes and in your body language and in your tonality and all these great things. And now it's just more effortless instead of going and doing a million of approaching a million girls you know it's a lot less you go out and on your first one she's all over you because you, yep. you just you're just oozing that that sex appeal you know because you're, you're you're handling your shit you know you're, yes you're living you're living your life you know what i mean you're, you're, you're tapping into um a higher level of consciousness and it and it it shows it shows in everything it shows in your energy it shows in you know your body language just the sub communication all, all those things mm -hmm. cool brother so what would you say, um, because I mean, you, you gave a lot of value, so I don't want to like, just keep beating, beat this to death, but like, what would you say, what would you say to someone, um, you know, like, could, you know, they're okay. They want to achieve self mastery yeah, and they're applying, they're applying their, they're applying the steps. So like they're reading these books, they're watching these yeah. videos, they're doing all these things. Um, and let's say they're still not because I know some guys who actually have worked on themselves really well, right? But they're still having a hard time connecting with women, right? So now we're going into right. like a very specific, unique question here. But yeah, I know, I know, like I know you, you're my boy, so I know that you're, you're doing your thing with the female. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I one sitting over there, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> so, what would you say to someone who is actually like working on themselves, doing the self improvement, and, and yeah. You know, but for some reason, they're still not connecting with women. Like, what do you think it could be or what, what's going on? Yeah. There? Have you, yeah, well, what's your perspective on that? Well, I, I have one quick follow-up question. Yeah. Is it not connecting in the sense that they don't give them a chance or not connecting in the sense that they get the chance, but they mess it up? Um, let's go with both, but more so, okay. um, more so they do get the chance. So let's say this guy's actually good. You know, he's good. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's working on himself all this. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still not able to really connect with women. What do you think okay. it could be, or what would be your, your suggestion or advice on yeah. that? Yeah. So, uh, 
I'm sure that all of us here at one point have played video games. And that's a little bit of the way I like to think of the world. So if you're working on all these other aspects, let's say, you know, you're lifting weights, you got your fashion up, you're, you're looking good, you're building up your business skills, your sales skills, but things aren't going well with the girls. It's just another skill. You know, you just, you got to keep practicing, but at the same time, you have to do correct practice. All right. Like for, let's take the, the NFL, for example, could you imagine a quarterback drilling that toss a hundred times with the wrong form? No, because that's going to ingrain a bad habit in his head that then like, for example, you Trey, as, as a, a mentor, you would have to go and erase the bad habit and put in a new one instead of just starting with the new ones. So my advice to somebody who's in that position is if you're looking to pick up the skill, like, like getting girls, for example, then you need a mentor who's already good at it, already fantastic, already been down all the roads. You need a master. It's just like learning a martial art. You don't want to go to some Mick Dojo because it's cheaper because like your friends are there. You want to go to the actual master. So at that point, that's why you would pick up trace services because then he'll teach you the right skills on how to do it. So to answer the question one more time, if you're working on yourself, you're doing good, but you just can't figure out why you're not able to get that girl yet. It's really simple. It's just the skill has not been practiced to perfection yet. And so it's just going to, it's going to take a little time. But if you have the right mentor who can teach you the right skills, you're going to get the results you're looking for. Perfect, brother. So let's go ahead and um, wrap this up. Uh, let's say someone wants to um, get access to your ebook, the ebook on self mastery. Yeah. Um, how wh how can they get access to it? And also, let's say they they want uh, they just want your support or your help, you know, your coaching, whatever. Can you just give us the details on how that would work? Yeah. So in regards to my ebook, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link here. It's actually on Gumroad. And that will be app.gumroad.com slash futurianism. And that's spelled F-U-T-U-R-I-A-N-I-S-M. And in regards to like having me coach you or give you advice and whatnot, you could find me on my Facebook. A lot of people are already getting advice from me on Facebook. You'll see like through my, my wall and such. It's Dante L. Castellani on my Facebook, or you could reach out to me on my website, which is once again, either Dante L Castellani.com or Luciano Castellani.com. And that's all the advice there for connecting to me. And I'm going to go ahead and put the link here. Hey, oh, that reminds me one more thing here about my book. Obviously this advice is worth a lot of money and I packaged, packaged it all in like a small book. And I'm selling it right now, only a cash outlay of $29.99. But if you're a member of Trey's group, of Trey's Masculine Throne, I'm going to give you, and only you, a special one-day discount. If you use the code Trey, that's T-R-E-Y. If you purchase this book, my book, using Trey's code, which is T-R-E-Y, then you'll get a 30% discount, $10 off only because you're a member of Trey's Masculine Throne. Excellent, brother. Thank you so much, man. You're hooking us up. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. So, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this up, man. You gave us a ton of value on how one can achieve self-mastery, on how one can become the best version of themselves and live their best life. And, we, you know, we went into different avenues and everything. Yeah, yeah. So I appreciate you coming on, brother, on this. Thank you for having me, Trey. Yeah, no doubt. On this beautiful Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So, mm -hmm. so amazing to uh, be alive on this on this day. And, yeah. Um, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. And thank you, fellas, for watching this presentation. And I will see y'all in the next videos. Peace.